Hey Spuddies, Potato McWhiskey here and welcome back to Let's Play Civilization 6 as the Ottomans where things are going super blotto man. My name is Otto and I like to get blotto. No, 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 no. We are having a really, really good time. Right, so the conquest of this continent has been going fantastically and it's only going to get better and it's only going to speed up. We have a little bit of stuff that we need to like, we have a little bit of housekeeping we need to take care of, a little bit of like mm, stuff we need to sweep around and, and get un under control. What I want to do with you is you actually need to be doing a listening post mission here to give me, hopefully, uh, some extra combat strength against these guys. Yeah, plus six intel on opponent's moves. That's perfect. You're going to go ahead and take the con artist promotion. Perfect. Perfect. That's how a cat says perfect. Perfect. Knowledge of economics has advanced. Solica is falling. We're blasting that city to oblivion. I love, I love this phase of the game where you know you're just, you're just, you're making moves real quick and you're, you're blowing things out of the water. Everything is dying. Um, I definitely need to upgrade a unit into a machine gun to give my cities that combat strength bonus. The city of Singapore needs to get blasted, and then we take Singapore, and then we liberate it. And the reason that we liberate it is, is because I can't hold it from a loyalty perspective, but having control of Singapore is actually quite handy, in that it takes away something from them and gives me diplomatic currency that I should now be able to sell off, because I don't particularly care, for a big chunk of cash. Um, any luxuries on the sale? Oh yes, please, two luxuries. Um, so taking Singapore, that was a big big move for us. It's going to make our lives slightly easier. More importantly, it was just a way to hurt Congo. The city's flipping in 16 turns. I think I can kill it faster than that. So I'm going to go ahead and start blasting it with my units. I have a bunch of builders kind of floating around doing what they should be doing. Can you get in range with this city so this can go ahead and blast there? Perfect. Uh, so to shoo me, if we could take it, we would. Ayuthaya. Definitely needs a builder, so we'll slowly build a builder in there. We do have the builder card plugged in, we do. Two turns until totalitarianism. That's going to be a big turn up for the books. Um, I wasn't expecting you to take this much damage. I tell you what, I will retreat you into the city for safety. And you need to retreat to here for safety, because he could go one, two, yeah, he could slap you there. All right. Almost got another biplane going. I could buy a biplane, but I want to be very, very careful at the rate at which I consume. Um, the rate at which I consume oil. Nice, Grand Bazaar coming up over here. Grand Bazaar. It is... I keep forgetting to repair this. Bizarro world. Bazaar. I wonder, did the word bizarre come from bazaar? Was it like a culture shock thing? Like Europeans would go into a bazaar and they're like, wow, that's so bizarre. So bizarre. Do -do 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 -do. So now I want to do a little sanity check. Uh, so we have no vision bonuses against him. He's a level three spy. We do listening post. And then we come in here and now we have the plus six intel on opponent's move. So that's like having, so having a spy gathering intel on your opponent is like having a great general apply to your entire army. It is so damn good. All right, let's start to blast Pokrovka. We'll retreat you for a single turn. Actually, you should be positioned here. Yep, that's perfect. Um, the city of Solica, I think we can take it this turn. Another shot. I guess I'll give another shot just for the sake of safety here. We'll Keep, we could liberate the Scythia, but that's not the play, it's not the plan. Our science is up to two, nearly 300 per turn, so we're, we're starting to accelerate in a very, very nice way. Got a little bit of something, something over here. We need to shoot this guy. Yeah, little, little chunks of damage. Death by a thousand arrows on these AT crews. So taking a look at the city of Rhodes, we definitely need to get our industrial zone now. It's honestly super late, super delayed, but that is the life that sometimes you have to live. And I think now... That we've cleaned up the Congo stuff. We can actually run down here and start pillaging their coastline. That'd be kind of fun to do. Uh, show them what for. Let's upgrade this artillery and then combine it with this artillery because that won't increase my oil consumption. You need to get combined. You need to get combined. So I would like to upgrade you too. I, 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 for some reason, that just reminded me of like the Scrubs joke where <laughs> where uh, I think it's, oh my God, I don't remember the character's names, but it's like the, the blonde her the blonde haired uh, doctor who... JD was like obsessed with and was like always trying to date and stuff. She, wait, no, was it her? The guy she was dating was like, I love you. And she was like, wasn't paying attention and goes, I love you too. But she was like organizing her CD collection. <laughs> and she was looking at the band U2. God, what a, what a classic, just really, really great joke. I love the idea of a, um, I, I, I love those kind of, now look, I'm going to be honest with you. I find it really tacky and annoying in shows and movies when like a problem of miscommunication like like a sort of thing like when, when a two-minute conversation could solve a problem 
right? You know, where two people are like, if you had literally just talked to each other for like half a second and clarified what each of you was thinking, there would be no issue here. That that really kind of, an, those kind of situations really annoy me. However, the exception to that is things like that, where someone mishears someone and then the other person doesn't want to correct them because it's extremely awkward. I don't know what it is about that version of that thing, but... It's really, really funny. I, I just, I, in general, I have a hard time watching things that are cringe. I g- genuinely, I think it would be amazing content to get someone or someone, like just put together like a cringe compilation and then try to get me to watch it without looking away or like physically recoiling. I guarantee you a hundred percent, like if you, if you bet me, you could bet me a million euro and I wouldn't be able to do it. I, I wouldn't be able to not cringe or recoil because I have a really, really hard time watching things that are cringe. And not, like there were times, like there's times, did you ever watch those like cringe compilations on YouTube, dude? Oh my God, there's, there's been times when I've been watching those and I actually, I like if I'm watching it with someone, I have to be like, we need to pause this because I, I actually cannot watch this any longer because it, I don't know what it is. It's like extreme painful cringing empathy is the, is the simplest way I can describe it. But um, another example of this sort of thing is um, it's it, 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 when someone gets hurt in a movie. Oh, dude, I was watching this David Blaine thing where he like, you know the one where he puts the things through his skin? Oh, dude, no, no, why? This is, it's just, it's just horrific. It's just horrific. Um, really didn't enjoy that one, watching that. Ugh, I don't know, I, I don't know what it is. I, I'm like, I just, I, I just can't help myself. I see it, I'm like, oh yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ, to make it stop. Uh, so Levy on Mass, we, we now, by the way, we just picked up fascism. Sorry, I kind of glossed over that really quick. Uh, we just picked up fascism, so we're going to get plus five combat strength to all of our units. We're going to reduce our war ribbiness. Now, I, I think we do have a significant amount of war ribbiness. If we go through our cities and we just have a little bit of a look here, and if I just tap to the right a little bit, uh, where you want to be looking is right here, by the way. Um, if you're watching the video, look at this little thing right here. Minus five war weariness. Um, a lot of the cities that I have conquered should have a significant amount of war weariness. Yeah, a little bit of war weariness over here. So by adopting fascism, we'll be able to deal with that a little bit better. Um, so there's two cards that we want to plug in here. We would like to plug in martial law. This will give us a ton of extra loyalties. That's plus eight loyalty in total when we conquer cities, right? And put a garrison in it. And I guess it's like, yeah, it's super, super good. Republican legacy, we probably want to keep, but we, we'll, we'll kind of play it by ear and make a few decisions here. Third alternative feels really good here. 48 gold, 24 culture. We can start to make some real things happen with that. So levy on mass raid, third alternative. We don't necessarily need to continue to build units. However, it would be nice maybe to, to plug some sort of unit production in. Maybe we could build veterancy and start building up the third alternative bonuses. I like that idea, actually. That allows me to give me economy as well as unit production. Uh, I'll plug in liberalism for a little bit of amenities because I think we are a little bit light on amenities. And so um, I would love to plug in. I don't think I have the war ribbiness card in here yet, but I would love to plug that in. So I'm pretty happy with that government. That's going to give us a little bit of a stay of execution on the current status of the game. We are going to have to change our government pretty soon when we do find tanks but i think for now that's an okay setup so i did just spot a spaceport in the congo's territory they don't have satellites or moon landing yet but they do have smart materials and stuff so we'll, ha- we'll have to kind of pick up the pace on the war front now i think i think the, the the sweeping down to the south and then sweeping back across this will work out pretty well for us we do need to go ahead and change well we're not plugging in the builder card because we don't really plan to make builders right now it's not part of the formula for victory go ahead and make sure we pillage that trade route right there tbilisi is falling rather quickly because of our loyalty pressure um kostromka will fall but i think we can make this happen just a little bit faster we could take it next turn. Aid request. I don't have the diplomatic currency to make that happen. Nuclear program. Urbanization I don't particularly care about. Scorched earth could be handy. Pick up slightly better pillaging raid card. Conservation ideology. I think it would be get good to get ideology um, because it has an extra spy card as well as ideological wars and a couple of like good upgrade cards for us here. Nuclear program is fine. We did manage to get another biplane. We'll put that one into Quila and we want to start pillaging these spaceports and all that kind of jazz. I'll quickly finish that armory because I can. I may as well. Great general points are great general points. We're making 30 per turn. Uh, I'm going to reassign you. Pingala gets reassigned to the capital. Don't need any promotions. I will grab Moksha purely just for loyalty. I don't really have anything to do with him. I'm going to take back Preslav. That'll be my city state now. So I'm getting the benefit of Preslav. Lots of extra loyalty. Preslav gives you plus two loyalty per turn in cities for each encampment district building. So if I capture cities with encampments, that's quite helpful. Pop you down here. Coastal raid this. Step out of the danger zone. You're moving down south in this direction because we want to build the axis of 
artillery along Mabanza and Pangu so we can go ahead and blast this city. So you head down this way. Um, I could really use another artillery. Where's my nearest catapult? You jump in the water. Another turtle made it to the water. And it's time to start building our railroads. I love building railroads. I don't know what it is. There's something really satisfying. I would play like an entire game around building infrastructure. Just no war, no nothing. Just like let me build things. I would love a pacifist 4X game. I understand why war is like in every 4X game. But it's, it still doesn't change the fact that I would love a pacifist one. Any of you guys are capable of shooting? Well, I need to bring Napoleon in. And that might open up the possibility. Right? One, two, and three. Tbilisi is falling incredibly quickly. Could I swoop in? No, not with those AT armies. I was going to say, could I swoop in and pillage that commercial hub? But there was an AT army kind of sitting there hovering around looking menacing. So we've got three AT armies here, or, or, or artillery armies rather. We'll send those to go kill Yerevan real quick because that'll act as an assault base onto Sweden. Georgia is begging me for peace. Absolutely not. Not in a million years. You're not getting any peace from me. I'm sorry. My only way out of this game and the situation that I was forced into is through war. Aid request passed. We just unlocked electricity, giving us access to seaports. Seaports could be quite handy for us to build. They're going to be worth a little bit more thanks to third alternative. Um, let's go ahead and make sure that we keep blasting this city down and then we take it with the ironclad. You have to melee down cities. That's why you need to do that. We'll keep this city. We don't want to liberate. We do want to check the culture victory. She's winning in 105 turns. So I'm probably going to have to try to kill her first. Sweden, how would you like a friendship and a military alliance. Now, if I can get Sweden to declare on anyone, I get another plus five combat strength against them. It's really important that I don't kill Congo though. Is it? What if I do kill Congo? What if I kill the Congo? What's her culture per turn? 350? I think I can kill Congo here. Yeah, I think I can safely. So the next thing I would like to do is to get bombers as well as nuclear bombs. I still haven't found tanks. Oh wait, there's tanks, right? So tank upgrade, huge. We're having a little bit of an oil problem. We will need to get plastics. We'll need to find another source of oil. We're down three oil per turn. Let's have a little quick look here. There's a bit of oil in Yerevan. If we can get that in the next 10 turns, we should be good. We've got, we've got 13 turns, well, potentially 14. With the, You have a buffer turn before you run out of oil properly, before you suffer the consequences. That was not where I meant to put you, but that is where you are. I will yoink that settler, though. I can make use of that settler. I got the armory in my capital. I could build a seaport and the military academy. Now, if I'm trying to remember exactly. Research lab, military academy and coal power plants, nuclear power plants, and stuff like that. Sorry, it's not sea seaports get the plus two science card. That's right. I was getting them mixed up in my head. Um, it is a significant upgrade. Four production, four gold, two culture. I'll get it. Helps me defend against the culture victory. And that is my main threat. My, my two biggest threats right now are the culture and the science victory. We're getting our traders up. We got another trader. Let's keep trading with Sweden, getting that cash flow going. Get another trader. Uh, we got my artillery in here in Kabul, another artillery army. I think this is going to be the last time we build an artillery army because we just don't have the oil. Um, so the big thing we need, can you quickly swipe me an aqueduct into an industrial zone? Um, so we take a look here. We definitely need zoos to keep our amenities high. We're already starting to suffer from negative amenities. Re 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 repair that preserve, get the encampment going. Granary monument, we need that culture and growth. We're not going to benefit much from the culture and growth for the long period of time, but it is a step in the right direction. The railroads have begun. Excellent. So we're railroading in earnest, also known as railing in, er er in earnest. <laughs> <laughs> railing in earnest is, you know I'm not even going to say what it sounds like you know what it sounds like okay alright we'll go ahead and pillage this pillage this a little bit of cash a little bit of stuff I would love to swoop in and pillage here but that would be quite tough to survive I'd love to also pillage all over the Netherlands coastline as well that'll also be a little bit scary okay there's scorched earth so we can plug in the better raid card total war let's take a little bit of a peek I want to I just want to keep an eye on this 102 turns so she's not getting too much closer all right the city of Tbilisi should fall this turn perfect another city captured think of all the hundreds of turns of production that went into making the city useful and i've just stolen that from the ai that's the true power of war is that you can take things that you didn't invest into and make them your own for very very little cost war is very very good in this game we got the grand bazaar in sivas we could go for a stock exchange we could also go for a shipyard i think i would rather go for the stock exchange because i would rather get the gold um the city's producing 12 gold for me. It does have a minus 1.3 gold, but cash is king. Cash is king. Watermill Granary Monument. Perfect repair. You 
are no longer particularly useful, so I'm going to go ahead and send you to go pillage spaceports. Congo's the only one with spaceports, so instead I'll send you to the Netherlands um, to find their industrial zones. Nope, they don't have any of those. Theatre squares? Nope. Um, I don't know where to send you then. I guess you can go steal gold from the Congo. Sure. Seems good. Um, right. Bring up the balloon. The balloon enables this attack. We can start to slowly chip away at the Congo's empire. Very, very slow chipping down, leveling up. Oh, there's so many cities down here for me to go take. I'm really, really looking forward to that, actually. I'm not usually a war kind of player, but it's kind of working out in the way that I want to. I hop in the water there, lads. The water is fine. Yerevan is next. We'll kill Yerevan. Not that we particularly care about actually killing Yerevan. It's just more like it's it's on the way. It's on the way of where we want to be. So even the counterattacks now at this point are just so incredibly anemic. Like nothing is happening to me because I've, I've utterly obliterated the AI's ability to fight back. There's our first harbour with plus four hour higher adjacency. We also just unlocked combustion. So no tanks are on the table. Go ahead and renew your mission to give me diplomatic visibility, please. Um, let's get the balloon over to there. Perfect. Napoleon to here as well. So now we have maxed out combat strength here. 120. 21 combat strength on these artillery. Really fantastic stuff. And air attack, air attack, air attack there. Come forward as well. You're ready for a promotion. You're also ready for an upgrade. You're ready for an upgrade. I've got 900 gold in the bank. I don't have the half price upgrade thing plugged in. And I probably will plug that in over veterancy at my next opportunity. 600 gold. I'll just wait a couple turns before we do that. So one thing I'm very keen to hear about is how vulnerable are these cities to easy conquest? Because I know a lot of the Canadian cities are actually quite vulnerable to a war. There's advanced flight. Uh, well, actually, I really want computers. And the reason I want computers is because the drone is actually an upgrade to the observation balloon. And instead of just giving plus one combat strength, it actually gives plus five bombard strength. So it makes my already insane siege units even better. Now, do keep in mind, the Ottoman actually gets stronger siege units. 50% production towards siege units and all siege units get gain plus five combat strength against defenses. So the Ottomans are quite an accomplished uh, conquest sieve. So we got the harbour in this city. Um, in order to support this war, I think I'm going to go for lighthouses. But in order to actually support the war, I think submarine might be the might be the ticket although ooh, I don't want to finish the submarine because it takes oil I was gonna say maybe battleships would be more appropriate if I could crank out a few battleships from the coast here 26 turns is a very long time but if I have every single one of these coastal cities cranking out battleships we will get battleships in a in like at a reasonable pace 30 turns from now and that might be useful to support the war. So a whole bunch of cities along my coastline producing battleships. I'll probably plug in the naval production card in the near future um, to make that work even better. But we are starting the construction of a grand fleet to challenge the Netherlands. Mostly the battleships will be support units. I don't actually really need them. They're there to add extra firepower to the landing. All right, let's get our artillery right up in our enemy's face. I don't know why that was the pathway you chose. I really hate it when the, when the, um, when the unit pathing thing lies to you. It really frustrates me. Because I'll, I'm, I'm trusting the game, basically. I'm making an action and then expecting an outcome. And then when the game gives me a different outcome from what it advertised, that, 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 that is a very frustrating experience when you move a unit like that. I've talked about that before. But it, I mean, to be honest, I'm not like emotionally like too cut up about it. It's, it's, just, it's kind of annoying. Huge pillages getting off in here. My enemies are having a real, real bad day. God, this is just genuinely a disgustingly good pillaging unit. Just so, Jesus. 6,000 gold in the bank from pillaging there. Now, granted, we had a little bit of gold in the bank already. Um, I could buy some tank armies if I wanted to. Oh, this is perfect timing on the Yerevan getting hit here. Yeah, if I'd ha if this, see, like, it's just it's the pathing. Georgi Zhukov, that's an atomic era great general. So he will happily boost not much, actually, that I currently have. But he will come in handy in his own way. Um, Isik has a campus, a holy site, a theater square, and a canal. Don't really see much, much value in this. Um... I suppose a supply convoy would take too long to build. You may as well repair your outer defenses. Your production is absolutely dog shite. Get yourself a builder and eventually you might be useful. Repair the armory in here. There we go. We connected our very first cities with railroads. Excellent. And the good thing is connecting up these railroad networks will mean that if I do suffer a dark age instead of a golden age, I will have the infrastructure to reclaim my empire, right? I, it won't be that I'm building an empire I'm just recapturing an existing one let's make sure we prioritize promotions on our artillery keep pushing them straight into our opponent's faces um I tell you what though I'm gonna go ahead and just take the tank upgrade here because I need to increase the pace of this war our biplane has leveled up so I'm going to train him as a ground attacker so I'll give him all the promotions that work towards there you need to hide from that AT crew we can swoop in here and start doing some damage to Batumi 
It's just it's always so fun to, to 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 conquer an empire. I think it's more fun to build than conquer, personally. But it is it is fun to conquer an empire. I don't know. How do you do? You prefer to build an empire? Or do you prefer to conquer an empire? It's kind of like a important question if you're a four X game player. Uh, you need to get ready to be in position to attack Yerevan. And we're kind of moving these guys towards the coastline with the Netherlands to see if maybe we can do a bit of damage with those Barbary Corsairs. I mean, we are doing damage with the Barbary Corsairs, let me tell you, because this coastline has been eviscerated. Thousands of gold just being ripped from the hands of the Congo as we savagely attack their coastline. So there's computers. This gives us access to flood barrier. Most importantly, the drone. Um, we also have ideology, commercial hub, harbor adjacency. There's a few kind of useful things in here. Uh, being able to produce tanks faster, open borders is nice. Nothing in here that I'm going to particularly change. It does, more spies is like the big thing. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and tap you to here, upgrade you to a drone, take out veterancy, plug in professional army, cheaper to upgrade, burning four oil per turn, which is a little bit too fast. Just a little bit too fast for me to be comfortable. You have a promotion, expert crew. We're getting to the point now where we'll have artillery with, with maxed out range. You blast the city of Rostavi. That's a Georgia dead, plus five era score, getting us closer to a golden age, meaning our empire won't collapse. We'll keep that city. And the biplane will make very, very short work of these uh, crossbowmen down here. Now, the question is, do we turn to the east and take on Congo, or do we continue to conquer the south? I think we continue to conquer the south. Reason being is that these are just going to be very, very easy cities for me to take relatively, relative to the investment required, if that makes sense. Uh, so with that, oh, there's modern armor. That could be handy to pick up. We won't be quite going for modern armor yet, though. And let's have a look here. Sports media, rapid deployment, capitalism, ideology, shopping malls. It would be nice to get conservation for the envoys to maintain control of Kabul, who is the really only city state that we really super care about right here. We might look to liberate more city-states if we can. I was almost going to say Toronto, but I'm pretty sure Toronto used to be a city-state and is no longer. Okay, nice. We are starting to blast the Congo back to Kingdom Come. Is that way? Is, is thy Kingdom Come? Is that a reference to, like, God coming back? <laughs> blast them back to Kingdom Come? Thy Kingdom Come, right? Is that like, is that not a prayer reference? Oh my god, did I just realize that now? I had no idea. I definitely feel like I've been up in my... Uh, ooh, 50% flanking bonus. I think I would rather have a great general, honestly, than the 50% flanking bonus, even though he doesn't really apply to any of the units that I currently have. All right, Yerevan, declare war. Uh, I did not say that we could be at peace. We'll be keeping Yerevan under my thumb. And I had a settler walking over here as well to claim this. I super need to do this and this get this oil up to kind of build me a bit of room conservation also will be quite handy i might plug in resource management that's another three to four oil depending on how much i have improved what's the co2 levels looking like it's looking pretty grim because i'm burning a lot of oil because of my army that's going to bring us some negative consequences sweden is building spaceports but she is the sieve i am least worried about because her tempo is the lowest so what to do with these three artillerymen i think we send them back east these three artillery are going to get sent back east to go fight the Congo. That should be a relatively easy, relatively quick war with relatively high rewards. And then once we have our entire continent, we can turn our eyes to the Netherlands and Sweden and really have a really long, hard and difficult think about just how important it is that we don't control the entire world. <laughs> um, or that we do. That we do? What? Oh, I, I messed up my sentence. I was basically world domination, right? It's on the cards here. All right, so you are going to step out here. You'll get upgraded into a machine gun. You'll consume his soul. So now we have a really good defensive machine gun unit. We're going to not allow this machine gun to encroach upon our vibe. So make sure we make use of every tool at our disposal to get rid of him. Perfect. So that machine gun's dead and Mabanza and Pangu is undefended. We did get the Grand Bazaar and Konya. Now, it would be nice to start producing units, I think. But the reality is that this city needs to get my Grandmaster's Chapel and the War Department back. Because I need that heal and I need the government title and I need all that. You know, I just I just need it. All right, biplane. Keep getting rid of the units for us. You, this tank I'm going to pillage with. Where is my drone? My drone is down here. It's out of range. But to me, pillage. You need to be ready to pillage again. You can get onto that tile, actually. You can take a little bit of damage. You should be fine. You, I'd love to upgrade you to a tank, but I don't quite have the oil for it just yet. I have not yet gotten this online. You're going to heal up a little bit. I kind of miss BBG. BBG has the, the oil thing, where if you build military academies, you get oil. And I really enjoy and appreciate that. You build me an encampment because you can. The city never got a chance to actually really build anything because it got flipped independent. What is going on here? Right, we're getting kills, we're doing stuff, railroads are going up. Do a railroad check. All right, we got we got like the beginnings of a network. 
It's like it's starting, starting to take shape. Right, so what's going on here? Artillery, we're storming the south. This observation balloon needs to be upgraded, so these three units have plus five combat strength. You're just pillaging, and you're doing an amazing job, and I'm super proud of you. Preslav's holding the line down here, man. Ooh, there's actually a ton of potential pillages over here with these boats. Bring them down, because I'm considering a war with the Netherlands to get in there and just rip up his coastal area, or her coastal area, rather. I think there would be a lot of utility in doing that. Not a lot of futility. The only thing we have to contend with are these battleships. Now, they're not infallible, they're not impossible to deal with, but they are just, they, they do a lot of damage to these little Barbary Corsairs. Right, there's advanced flight. This brings up bombers as well as fighters, so I'm going to head over to the capital. Once we finish that military academy, we can get started on our first bombers. <gasps> we don't have aluminium. Aluminium, sorry. Yeah, we need to get aluminium here in the radio tower. That way we have enough aluminium for our aircraft. Ah, uh, plus one range, forward observers. That's a four range artillery. When that becomes a ro rocket artillery, oh man, hell will break loose. Right, there we go. Artillery in range. Let's blast the city of Batumi. You're going to go ahead and take that pillage here. You need to get out of here. You get a kill. That should free up a retreat route for this cuirassier. Um, we got some traders going. Put you in Athens. I'll put you in Rhodes. You're making the railroads of all things. I'll get myself another group of military engineers so they can work in pairs. It's an expensive move, costing about 1800 gold, but I think it will pay itself off in some respects by the end of the game. So unfortunately, I just don't have the strategic resources to support a much bigger army, so I'm going to have to play it about maximizing my yields. Gold, science, culture, all that stuff. Blast the city. The city is crumbling, actually. Um, I don't have a unit in range. You're my best use case, so I'm going to turn you into a tank and you'll be in range in the next turn or two to get down here. Can I get enough railroad to make a difference? Probably not. But I could do an ideological war. What golden age cards do we have here? We've got Heartbeat of Steam. It's a decent amount. We've got Sky and Stars. Ah, uh, that's alright. We've got Solidarity. It's pretty good. Two Arms. It's pretty decent. And Wish You Were Here. So none of those cards really matter. So yeah, I don't need to do anything to get a better idea thing. We'll just do an ideological war with the Netherlands. And the goal is to swoop in... Like here, for example, where we can just get an outrageous number of pillages on massively expensive infrastructure and just rip up their coastline. My economy is almost entirely fueled by the spoils of war, which I love. I love that. I love that's a really cool thing because like if, if the income from spoils of war ever slowed down or stopped, that's a wrap. <laughs> that's, a, that's an absolute wrap. I'm done. And not just on Twitch. Withering drought, a little bit rough around the edges. There's sanitation. None of this is particularly useful to us. Conservation is quite useful if you want to do resource management, which I'm afraid I think I have to do here to keep the the army fueled um, with oil. Run into oil, oil issues, as does every world domination power. Resources are the things that fuels your war. And therefore, if you fail to secure enough resources, you will fail to win the war. I could liberate Georgia. I'm not going to. Instead, we're just going to do a little bit of micromanagement so we can start blasting the city of Caspi next. Tbilisi, trade route. Well, we want to trade with Sweden, so I'll put you in Jelonis. Um, We could use professional sports. We don't really need Cold War. It would be nice to get mass media for the governor title. None of that is particularly interesting to me. Um, capitalism, shopping malls, all that sort of jazz. Not especially useful. I'm kind of more interested in some of these deeper things. I think the culture tree, we're more or less, we got everything we want from it. Um, TBH. We could build flood barriers. I don't think we care. I think we would rather try to just build up a bigger army. And part of that is going to be building battleships. I'm going to have very little coal, but I'm going to have a massive navy in the next 20 to 30 turns. You completed a trader. Let's go ahead and build me a spy as well. I got the zoo in here. AoE production, AoE bonuses, AoE, 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 area of effect. Anything that provides benefits in a large, wide scope of area. So let me see. Can you get to here, put a railroad on his tile? Okay, hear me out now. You get to here, put a railroad on his tile, then put a railroad here. That might give my tank just enough range next turn. What if I move this guy? Yeah, next turn we should be able to swoop in and take this city. Um, you're going to go ahead. Uh, so what promotions does this guy have? He has crew weapons and shells. So you're going to take grape shot and then you're going to eat him. And now you have three promotions. They're not like ideal, but three promotions is three promotions. It's time to pillage the village and steal their money. It's time to pillage the village. God, this is actually horrific to play against. What an annoying sieve. Like these units, they just swoop in and they do whatever they like. Like pillage, pillage. And then we'll be on this and pillage that. Dude, he's 
she's having a really bad day. A piety T has been found. That's another little bit of error score. We do need to make sure we secure error score for the next age. All right, so this, this stuff down here, this is like fairly, fairly humdrum, like run of the mill stuff. We, we come down here, we blow up the city tank. Can you take the city of Caspi? Oh, not quite. Can you get in there? You're out of range. Can I maybe get a bomb? Major defeat, take Caspi, boom. You might be saying like, Potato, why are you conquering all these random cities? And you know what? That's a great question. I'm just doing it because I can. I need this massive empire. It's all fueling me. Speaking of though, I think I'm going to change things up. It's taken me quite a while to get through this game. Uh, I'm probably going to record a very, very long session where I don't talk much except for when I capture cities. So this is going to be the end of the play-by-play -play for this southern section of the map. Stay tuned. Let's get started on nuclear fission and then we'll go ahead and research uranium. With an entire continent under our belt, we should easily be able to produce nuclear weapons and the aircraft needed to, to use them. And then we should easily be able to nuke our way through the Netherlands. You know, I've, I've, I've encountered an interesting question. I actually don't know if you can boost the Manhattan Project with the Royal Society. That's something probably worth testing someday, but I'm going to just go for the War Department. Mabanza Mpangu has fallen and... It is now mine. The pillaging is well underway as well. Quite happy to see the devastation on this coastline. Winnipeg will now be mine. I do need to get myself a quick supply convoy down here to keep the artillery on the move. Faith by a quick tank so that we can go ahead and merge him in. Lovely, there's Torre del Paine, although that doesn't really have much use for us in this era of the game. It is more of a curiosity. There's nuclear fission, giving us access to the lovely nuclear power plant, which we will try to make use of, as well as the Manhattan Project, and most importantly, the nuclear device, an extremely cost-effective way to kill a city in a single turn. Um, now, it does come with downsides, but it will mean that as long as we can get a unit in range of Stockholm, we can hit it and take it. And similarly, as long as we can get a unit in range of Amsterdam, we can hit it with a nuke and take it, thus triggering the domination victory. So very much so, we are on the pathway to victory and it could not have come sooner. So let me go ahead and check my list of cities here, organized by yields. And then in my most productive city, which is Akalaki, I will start the Manhattan project in here. Now, the city is suffering a 10% production decrease from a lack of amenities. So I'm going to come in here and buy a stadium to try to reverse that and even potentially get a positive amenity outlook. And then to optimize, we also want to grab as many productive tiles from the nearby area. It looks like we actually need a builder over here to repair some of these. So I'll quickly yoink myself a low charge builder to get these repairs done. We've got the Manhattan Project down to 14 turns. We could probably optimize this a little bit by moving Victor into the city because he has the arms race project although i wonder if that's actually the correct one possibly not that might only be for building the nukes themselves we also really want to build the stadio de Macana. that's plus two amenities across our entire empire so i will buy a zoo and a stadium oh i can't quite afford it Get a little bit of cash off you. Right, I traded Sweden for a little bit of cash so I can buy the stadium and the next turn we can get started on the Estadio. The reason we would like to build the Estadio of the Maracana is because it gives you plus two amenities in each of the cities in your civilization, as well as plus six culture. The culture is less important. The more important thing is the plus two amenities in every city. That is a really, really powerful yield that really helps you out. And it's for a number of reasons. We're going to be dealing with a lot of war weariness, which it'll help with loyalty. It'll help with yields. Um, and it's just going to make a big difference to our capability of waging war across multiple continents. Now, it'll take us a long time to get it, but if we can get it before the game ends, it'll help. Victoria is mine. Canada's former empire is slowly but surely falling under my thumb. Congo just got their first modern armor which is a little bit scary uh, because it means that their capital is extremely well defended. We are still waiting for bombers, I believe. Mostly due to the fact that I don't think we, we either didn't find aluminium in like my entire empire except for here, or I just haven't had a chance to improve it yet. And to be honest with you, it's a little of both. Like there just isn't that much aluminium in my empire. Montreal has fallen. Thank you very much. Finally, we're about to break this district. It's been a, a long time coming. I'll break it with the tank, although I'm worried about the tank's health after this, but I think it's necessary because this will allow me to get a step closer to Mbanza and Congo and actually start bombarding the city itself. Toronto has fallen to me and now I can get this aluminium online and this one here actually. We'll keep this city, we'll start bombers soon. And now the noose is starting to close around Congo. 
Unfortunately, I will have to conquer the entirety of the Congo to be able to grab all of those yields, but I don't have to conquer all of Sweden and all of the Netherlands. The Netherlands, I should be able to just take the capital, essentially, like the southern tip of the continent, as long as I can take up to, like, the Hague and Imogen and all that, we should be fine. Although, to be fair, that's actually entirely dependent on how far along in the science victory that they get. Uh, It might entirely be the case that I have to do more damage to their economy than I'm anticipating. Lovely. There's combined arms. We can now build the aircraft carrier and the destroyer. We also have access to uranium. I don't seem to have found any uranium as far as I can tell right now. You have a look. One copy, one source of uranium in my entire empire. There's another source down here. One over here. There's one on this one tile island. That's definitely a settler purchase for that. Send a settler from Adirne or Edirne. Yeah, then there's one in Sweden and that's about it. That's all the uranium. So we do have access to a decent amount of uranium. We'll be able to start making nuclear bombs in the not too distant future. Ottawa is now mine as well. And the hope is that Kingston will just flip naturally over the course of the next 10 turns. First copy of aluminium up. There's nanotechnology boosted. And more importantly, I can start buying bombers who will be delivering my nukes. I need to pillage more. That's something I have kind of let fall by the wayside, but mostly just due to the fact that I don't have enough tanks on the front line to support my war effort. So let's upgrade this Corassier core to a tank and buy ourselves another tank to join up with him. This poor tank right here got hit very, very hard, but that was his job to tank that aggro. And now we're getting into a position where bombarding the city of Mabanza Congo becomes a uh, a real possibility. This is this is the phase of the game that I like to call the deep the deep war because there's there's really not that much interesting stuff going on Um, but it still requires me to be like fully paying attention and moving my units around very carefully and putting them in the right places where a single turn takes like five to ten minutes because I have to micromanage so many different things and I, 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 I personally I feel like this phase of the game is the least fun phase of the game the most fun phase of the game is like really early when you're making like really impactful decisions and you can churn through turns really quickly um but this is kind of the compromise you make when you play like a really big game of save like we're playing right here especially if you have a bad game of save in order to actually scrape out a victory you have to be ready to put the turns in to make a big old army and go bonk people on the head Couple of city here flipping towards Congo. I should be able to kill them before they flip. I do need to deal with this little tank over here. Let's upgrade you to a fighter because you'll be much more useful as a fighter. There we go. The first little bit of damage to Congo's capital has been done. This spells the end of the Congolese Empire. It is a countdown to destruction. Getting some lovely coastal pillages off still, even this deep into the game. So much of my cash is coming from just pillaging and killing I have a lot more respect for navy and naval stuff, in particular privateers. I actually think privateers could very easily form a part of a game plan. Um, Now that I've kind of seen the Ottoman version, like, at its peak power, I definitely feel like on this kind of a map, especially if you don't really care about the, like, diplomatic ties to another faction, grab yourself a couple of privateer armadas, send them out, rip through enemy infrastructure and just reap the rewards like just it's it's actually insane how much value you get from pillaging i like i i often forget after playing that norway game just how good it is i played a norway game once upon a time where i just went pillaging and it was ridiculous just the amount of yields i got from uh, pillaging pillaging my way through that entire game time for quebec to fall brantford will follow and there she goes it is now mine we shall keep this city and we will also keep ourselves brantford next up Quango and the Congo. Oh, wait, I can sneak into the canal and pillage everything around the canal. Oh, I can do some very, very sneaky stuff here. There's so many, like, little interactions like that that I've just never encountered in a game of Civ, because why would I? Like, I'm never... These are the kind of things you almost have to, like, you know, run into on purpose. There's a couple of military emergencies going, uh, both in favour of Wilhelmina and against me. But that is totally fine, because Canada is now mine and the Congo will be mine as well. But even Mabanza Congo can't stand up to this sustained bombardment. They're trying. Bless their little stars, they're trying. Railroad update for the curious. We have a pretty decent railroad, I would say. We've connected up the vast majority of the northern half of my empire. I would like to start a railroad heading over here to the west so that I'm prepared to kind of jump down Sweden and the Netherlands' throat. 
So I'll start moving some military engineers back over here so that I can redeploy my army after this conquest. Right, lovely. We have access to jet fighters as well as missile cruisers. I am going to go ahead and cancel any construction of missile cruisers that's happening here because I don't want to use up oil. I built enough battleships to support my landing forces. The nice thing is you can sort these cities pretty effectively and then use this to just go through and cancel everything. Looks like somebody else built the Estadio. Um, Sweden built it up in here in Orbro. Don't really care. Not that big of a deal. If it's gone, it's gone. I'm not going to cry over spilt milk. What I will cry over is my lack of bombers. I'm going to start producing them right now. Although actually my capital is an exceptional city um, that I want to get the seaport in because it's plus two gold in all coastal tiles in the city and the city's working a lot of coastal tiles. So that actually makes more sense to me as well. That gold is super helpful. I think a giant death robot could be helpful to me in this game. Let's go ahead and settle our first uranium tile right there. There's another one down here and then there's one down here. So I'll need to buy another settler. My settlers are incredibly cheap considering like, like they're a thousand gold, which is nothing. Which just goes to show you how few settlers I built this game. Normally, if I have an empire this big, my settlers cost thousands of gold, like thousands upon thousands. Um, but this is barely even a scratch in the um, in the coffer. See, so yeah, a lot of my turns right now are what I call solved turns, where what I have to do is obvious. So I'm not really like, and when I say obvious, I mean, it, like most of my turns are now like clicking on a unit and then shooting on it and then waiting until the next turn to do the same thing. So I'm not like going over my turns in detail, just because I'm pretty sure you guys could figure that out. Like I am optimal in the sense that I'm just trying to get through my turns quickly. So I have a hotkey that I press that brings me to my latest uh, unit requiring an action. And then I take that action and then I go to the next one and uh, I'm getting through them pretty quick. But even going as fast as I can, it's still just a little bit tedious and a little bit slow. The one thing I will forgive Civ uh, for, for being tedious in the late game, is that, yes, it's tedious in the late game, but compared to most 4X games, they get tedious in the beginning. <laughs> so I can kind of forgive Civ for a little bit of tedium in the very, 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 very late game. Yes, I did just make the it could be worse argument. What of it? I actually didn't need a settler to do this, but um, it's probably easier if I use a settler. I could have just sent a builder over there to capture that. All right, Quango, your time has come. I reckon we might be able to get this city this turn. Um, so we've dealt with the encampment. I just need to get this drone up to here. Perfect. And then get these two to bombard. Step you there. Oh, not enough movement to pillage. Well, then just take the city of Quango. And now... Like I said, Congo's on the verge of destruction. Yep, there we go. There goes the capital. Kaboom. I've taken it. Now, the loyalty in here might be a little bit of a struggle, but that's not important. What's important is we've achieved our main objective here on this continent. We've captured Congo's capital and we're almost finished the Manhattan Project. I just need an aircraft carrier, a handful of bombers and a few tanks to cross the sea. And uh, Netherlands and Sweden are going to have a really, really bad time. That is going to be it from this episode, though. So I love you all very much. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.